So this lesson is all about area in parallelograms and trapezoids. Now we're familiar with area in squares, rectangles, triangles, etc. Uh, but this one is all about parallelograms and trapezoids. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remind ourselves exactly what area is. Um, and at its core, area is just the amount of space that a 2D shape covers. Um, and it's always expressed in something called square units, uh, which is just uh, an extension of regular units, whereas an inch, I mean, that's not an inch, we can say that an inch is that distance. If that is one inch, then one square inch, written as either one inch squared or one square inch, is the amount of space taken up by a square that is one inch on each side. So each of these are an inch. So this is one square inch. Now it doesn't quite work that way where we have a square with that is two inches on each side. That's not two square inches. Beyond one square inch is just the number of square inches that can be that uh, can be covered by the figure. So square inches, square meters, square kilometers, square decimeters, square yards, square miles, etc., all expressed in terms of one square inch, one square mile one square decimeter, etc. So as I said, we're familiar with the uh, definition of area for things like rectangles and triangles. Rectangles, of course, are length times width. Uh, triangles being one half base times height. Now we can think of that as uh, our base and height for, say, this right triangle here are pretty easy to see, base and height, um, where base is whatever the bottom um, length of the triangle side is, and the height is the distance from that to the um, vertex on the opposite side. Uh, but for a triangle like this one, an obtuse triangle, where the vertex isn't immediately over the base, the height is still just this vertical distance down to the level of the base. So this is the height, and then this space right here, just the regular length of the triangle, is the base. So one half base times height. Now we can use that to talk about the area of a parallelogram. We can use both of those in fact. So the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is pause the video and see what you can do with this. How would you find the area of this particular parallelogram? If you're familiar with the um, if you're familiar with the area formula, you can go ahead and use it. That's great. If you're not familiar with the area formula, try to take a second and see if you can figure out how we might be able to manipulate this shape a little bit um, and make it fit what we want, which is finding the area of this parallelogram. Well, we're going to assume at the moment that you're not familiar with the area formula or you haven't used it. And so we want to look at this parallelogram, the things that we know are we know how to find the area of rectangles, the area of squares, and the area of triangles. And it seems perhaps that it might be a little bit helpful because we have a triangle here. We have the start of a rectangle, but we have this missing place here. And at the moment, we can't be entirely sure just what this triangle space is. It turns out that this triangle is exactly the same as the triangle on the left. Uh, but that involves mathematics that we haven't gotten to yet. So right now, we can't actually use that. We're just looking at this and thinking, what can I do? Well, I intentionally used this dotted line to show you a place where we could perhaps break the triangle. And, or excuse me, break the parallelogram. So if we take a look at it now in a slightly different sense, we see that we have a tilted side on the right and a tilted side, or excuse me, tilted side on the left and tilted side on the right, and they look pretty similar. We know that these two lines are parallel because it's a parallelogram, so what happens if we were able to move this half of the figure over here? And it turns out that half of the figure makes the parallelogram into a rectangle. Now we know that this is a right angle because that's how we designed the parallel. We dropped uh, the height straight down at right angles to each of the sides. Those are all right angles, which means that this has to be a right angle too, because that's the amount of degrees that are left in a quadrilateral. So this is now a rectangle. And the area of this rectangle is just 
the base or the length, which is 25 feet, times the height, which is 8 feet, which gives us an area of this rectangle of 200 square feet. And we didn't add anything to the parallelogram. We didn't take anything away from the parallelogram. All we did was move a part of it so that we could see it used to find the area. Move this back over here. So because we found the area using every part of the parallelogram, this is also the area of not only the rectangle, but also the parallelogram. And we can figure out what the area formula is for the parallelogram by looking at the 25 feet, which is the base of the parallelogram, and the 8 feet, which we'll call the height of the parallelogram because it's the distance between two parallel sides, the two parallel bases. And that's it, it turns out. The area of a parallelogram is just base times height, exactly like a rectangle. So go ahead and pause the video now and see what you can do about finding the area of these four parallelograms. Numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, for number 1, I gave you intentionally too many values here because you had to remember that the area of the parallelogram was just the base times the height. In this case, the base times the height is 20 times 7 for number 1, which gives us 140 square kilometers. For number 2, we have a base of 16 meters. We have a height of 21 meters. So when we multiply 16 by 21, we end up with the area of the parallelogram, which is 336 square meters. For number 3, we have a base of... Uh, 10.5 decimeters. We have a height of 18 decimeters, and we multiply those two together, we end up with an area of 189 square decimeters. And finally, for number four, we have a base of 35 yards and a height of 12 yards. Multiplying 35 by 12 then gives us the area, which is the same as 420 square yards. So one more time, a quick review. The area of a parallelogram, just the base times the height. Now we're after the area of a trapezoid. And so we're looking at this and we're trying to figure out what exactly can we do with a trapezoid. We can't exactly take this triangle and move it like we did. Perhaps we could flip it around and make something else like that happen. But see, what do you think we can do to find the area of this trapezoid? Welcome back. What if I gave you this trapezoid also? It's the same trapezoid. Nothing has changed, except I have now flipped it upside down. Well, if we put both of these trapezoids together, then we end up with a parallelogram. A parallelogram with base of 16 meters and height of 4 meters, so we end up with 64 square meters. The area of each individual trapezoid, though, is that whole area divided by 2. So what we have here is we have two bases for every trapezoid. We have the first base, base 1, which is one of the bases, and base 2, of course, is the other base. And it turned out that the base of this parallelogram was the sum of these two bases. So the area of the parallelogram here is the first base, which we call B sub 1, a 1 to the right and slightly below the B is called a sub 1, plus B sub 2, the blue, the, excuse me, the red and yellow bases, times what we can still call the height of the trapezoid. But that is the area of one parallelogram. We have to divide this all by 2, and that gives us the area of a single trapezoid which is just one-half times the sum of the bases times the height. Again, this works because if we double the parallelogram and flip it, then the area, excuse me, double the trapezoid and flip it, then the area of the parallelogram is the sum of the bases times the height, and we divide it to define the area of the trapezoid. So last time, pause the video and see what you can do with finding the area of these trapezoids here.
So for number one, we have our two bases is 12.5 and 16.5 meters. Our area is 1 half, 12.5 plus 16.5, all times 4. 12 and a half plus 16 and a half is 1 half of 29 times 4. Multiply 29, 4 and 1 half all together, and you finally get an area of 58 square meters. For number two, we have a two bases of five and nine feet and a height of 10. Again, base one plus base two times height. Base one plus base two gives us one half, 14 times 10. Multiply all those together and you get an area of 70 square feet. For number three, we are looking at two bases of eight inches and 12 inches. Multiply the height by the height, which is nine. Adding those two bases together gives us 1 half 20 times 9. That gives us an area of 90 square inches. And finally, for number 4, we have a two bases that are 35 yards and 55 yards. Multiply that by the height, which is 20 yards. 35 plus 55 is 90. So this is 1 half times 90 times 20 and gives us an area of 900 square yards. So once again, the area of a trapezoid is just one half times the sum of the bases times the height, which we saw by making two trapezoids into a parallelogram. And the area of a parallelogram is just the base times the height, exactly like a rectangle.